This is the second part of my last video. And like the last video, the main part in this video is the part from the Alexander Grace YouTube channel. Kevin Samuel's videos are good, but Alexander Grace provides explanations and gives solutions to men. Alexander Grace puts both men and women into two categories. High quality and low quality. This differs from Kevin Samuel's, which mostly talks about high value men. A high value man has money. Where a high quality person is the everyday average person. Money is not a factor. If a high quality man marries a low quality woman, you are guaranteed to get a divorce. Alexander Grace tells us how to recognize and avoid low quality women. I will put a link to his channel in the description. I encourage you to watch his videos. What he says is very good. Before we get into his video, I will provide other videos that will build up to what he has to say. Next, I will recap what he said in my last video. Then I will do the continuation of what he said. Do not forget to like and subscribe and all the stuff. My problem is, is that I tend to attract narcissists. And I'm the complete opposite of a narcissist, like a board. Oh, okay. Um, and I know I'm, I'm literally saying, like, I'm, I'm board is a Board is I, a reason a lot of women leave, but see, so honestly, what, what, what me in here is there's no reason to be a good guy because, you know, when I was a good guy, women left me, but when I became a player, that's yeah. not our problem. What does a traditional housewife entail? Well, you tell me, because you said you're not one. <laughs> uh, you picked the right one. You know, housewife, <laughs> I'm just imagining kind of being a slave. <laughs> so that's Let me stop you right here. Let me stop like you right here. Let me stop you right here. Mm -hmm. we, don't need white, we don't need white supremacy racism. Well, now we got is this, that you think that the women who came before you were slaves. It's not, it's not that necessarily, but just what I'm seeing in, in the media and just all around me, I see women trying to be this housewife for men, traditional housewife for men, and they're just getting like... What are you talking about? When women... A woman who's, mm, let's do it. Let's do it. Traditional housewife, what media are you talking about? Uh, so let's, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I want you to define what traditional housewife No, 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 no. You can't, mind, you, you, I, no, no. Is being home you can't over talk me. That's how we don't know. We don't do that. Stick okay. Down. okay. What media are you talking about? Social media. Where do you see traditional housewives in social media? Everywhere. Do you? Well, I mean, that I know of, just women getting taken care of and not working. No. So that's what a traditional housewife is, taking care of and not working. To me, yes. Oh, okay. So, uh, and that's getting the shit into the stick? Uh, from what I've seen so far, yes. I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue. My intention is not to say that I have all the answers, but my intention is to show you what doesn't work. This woman had no words about serving her husband and serving her family. Her only words were about serving herself. Self-centered women may be able to have relationships at some point. However, they typically fail. And they either fail because the man becomes a shell of himself, or they fail because they get divorced and nothing will keep her happy. Bigger question because you have like uh, these high standards for your man, right? Mm -hmm. What are you prepared to offer him? Well, myself. But like, well, what do you think that you? Okay. <laughs> Her silence speaks volumes. <laughs> it's not just the silence either. It's when she answers the question. It's the double blink and the the head shake. Like, well. <laughs> Me, <laughs> duh. <laughs> that silence is actually deeply revealing of just how much sexism exists in our culture 
towards men. Men and women in romantic relationships trade with each other. I'll bring this to the relationship if you bring that to the relationship. I need you to bring a little bit more of that, but if you do, I'm prepared to bring a little bit more of this. And if we both think that we're getting a good deal, then we'll go ahead with the relationship and it'll serve both of our interests. She understands on her end that it makes no sense for her to be in a relationship with a man unless he's bringing some tangible improvements to her life. In order for her to commit, she needs to know that it's selfishly going to be in her best interest to be with him. That part she understands. She's got that 50% absolutely down. But the missing 50% is where she is meant to serve her husband and his needs. When you ask modern women, what are you going to do to improve the life of the man that you're with? You know, what are you going to bring to the table? What are you going to offer him? That's where you get that error message where it's like, it doesn't compute. This question makes no sense. I'm the woman. I'm meant to receive. I'm not meant to give. And that's why I say that modern women in this culture have a deep, toxic, unconscious sexism against men. A lot of it goes back to the lack of understanding about the transactional nature of relationships and a misdiagnosis of the dynamics behind traditional marriages. A lot of what we're seeing now is this backlash against this false narrative. So let me unpack this. Radical feminists railed against the traditional marriage structure. They called it exploitative and controlling. You know, you think of like a typical 1950s, you know, husband and housewife. The painting of all married men in the past as these toxic, controlling, abusive, of patriarchs who exploited their wives is fucked up. That is a deeply sexist narrative and it's just plain wrong. Okay, what are your expectations of a traditional man? Provide the money. Don't hit her. Don't cheat on her. It's pretty basic. It's pretty low expectations. But, you know, back in the day, as long as a man fulfilled those criteria, he was considered a good man and it benefited her. Of course it did. That's why women back in the day wanted to get married because the marriage would provide safety, security, dignity, respect from her friends and neighbors. And what did she provide in return? Gratitude, housekeeping, all the cooking and cleaning, raising children, sex. These elements formed the basic transaction that so many couples made. Their pair bonding was concretized using these elements elements as the cement. Hey, husband, you go out into the world, you take your masculine energy and then you trade your labor for some money and then you bring that money back and spend it on the household. Hey, wife, okay, I'll do that, but I'm out here working hard. So while I'm working, can you make sure that everything in the house is clean, that the children are being raised properly and that there's a hot meal on the table when I get back from work? That's it. It's not that controversial. That was the trade being made. It's not the radical exploitation that feminists were making it out to be. Both parties were benefiting from this transaction. You could say that the woman's life was pretty boring, being stuck at home and doing all of that housework. But I mean, yeah, the man's life going to some factory or office job is pretty boring too. This is not a story of exploitation. Both genders suffered under their roles, but they're working together. They're creating this partnership in order to benefit each other and themselves. But somehow this awful sexist narrative that marriage was inherently exploitative and, you know, men were controlling women through the institution of marriage. That's what went mainstream. That's what people believed. Ask modern women coming up in the culture today what their opinion of those traditional marriages were. They'll all tell you the same thing. That was back when women were treated like slaves and they were abused by men and they were exploited. That's their perception of what that marriage was. No concept of the actual transaction that was being made. If you ask them about the suffering that the men might have encountered in fulfilling their role of the bargain, you know, how hard it was to go out to, to work, to have all those financial responsibilities on his shoulders, any of the suffering that came with his roles, it's completely dismissed, negligible, unimportant. You know, we don't care about men's suffering. But the woman's suffering, she had to do all that housework. She was bored sitting alone. Her children's sometimes acted terribly and she had to deal with that. Oh my God, oh, protect them, protect the precious women. And conveniently, we'll also completely ignore all of the benefits that marriage brought to a woman's life. It even got to the point where you had radical feminists claiming that motherhood was a form of exploitation of men, a way to keep women enslaved and in bondage. Motherhood is exploitation of women. Think about that. Think about how twisted and far from reality you have to go before you can say something like that with a straight face. And so for modern women who sincerely believe this stuff, you can see why they can't just settle for the old transaction. You do your masculine part, I'll do my feminine part. Because to them, that seems like exploitation. That seems like slavery. It's sexist. It's exploitation. I'm a modern woman. I need more. So specifically, what do modern women want? You know, you ask them, what are you expecting? Well, 
I'll tell you one thing, they're still expecting to be financially taken care of. Despite all the claims of gender equality, if you ask a woman how she wants her husband to spend his time, she's going to talk about his job, about how much money he's going to be bringing home. Modern women need equality. Equality means the man needs to do half of the cleaning, half of the shopping, half of the cooking, half of the parenting. The biggest new expectation from women of their boyfriends and husbands is that that man is going to be there to meet all of her emotional needs. That's new. It didn't used to be that way. But if you are her husband, then you're expected to listen to every thought, every feeling, every opinion, every emotion she's experiencing. And you have to respond perfectly. And if what she's going through is quite distressing to her, it's your job as the man to fix it. So if you think that you can just be nice to her and hand her some middle class, you know, paycheck each week, and then you've done your duty, you're kidding. The expectations and requirements for men has risen so much. It's still all the money that you need to provide, but now it's also half of all the domestic chores and meeting almost all of her emotional needs too. It's a lot, and it especially stings that we exist in a culture that paints men as though they're these awful sexist leeches, when men are doing so much more now than they ever did in the past. The desire for men to do more and more and more, it just seems insatiable. And this is why you have so many men who just look at modern marriages and relationships and say, ah, it's not worth it. This transaction sucks. I'm getting a bad deal. The requirements for men has risen so much. And at the same time, the expectations for women have sunk. So for everything that men are offering women, what exactly are they getting in return? Too many men are underestimating the value of what they're bringing into a relationship. You're giving up your freedom. You're giving up a huge amount of money. You're giving up like there's an opportunity cost, all these other options that you could have pursued, but you didn't because you chose her. That's a big deal. You're giving up a lot. Please make sure that you're not giving it up for nothing. Make sure you're getting something good in return.